Let's start with your life's mission of making 1 billion people happy. How did you come to embrace this as your life's mission? Did your own personal story have something to do with it? Well, you know, first of all, it's over a billion. I don't like anyone to limit. Uh, I live in an <laughs> infinite world of possibilities in the future. So over a billion people, and really it's a, a, a an aggregation of a bunch of things, but, you know, understanding what makes people happy, having the situational knowledge experience, relationship capital to not only make a lot of money, but help a lot of people with that money and have a lot of fun. And what happened was later on, through my journey of being a multimillionaire, losing over $100 million 14 years ago, making it back with a major shift in the paradigm from trying to get more happy, more healthy, more wealthy, and more worthy, living in a world of not enough where I was a victim, everything happened to me regardless of how much money I had, and then living in a world of for me where everything was a trade or a negotiation, buying things to be happy, buying more things to be happy, buying things I don't need, buying things to impress people I don't even like, uh, to this world of abundance, uh, away from a zero-sum game where you give to receive or trade or negotiate for everything, but instead a value-add world of more than enough of everything for everyone. And when I made this paradigm shift in my life that I am happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy, I just have to figure out what I'm doing to interfere with it. I realized that I could empower others through both uh, perspective, but also practice on how to effectuate creating abundance, helping other people, having fun. And then something terrible happened. My 12-year-old daughter at the time, one of her best friends committed suicide. And it really hit me hard. And um, you know, doing research on, I could understand how you know people that are older, drug addicts or PTSD or CTE, you know, a variety of things that happen in a long journey that so many human beings are on, how they could you know, face a choice, an existential choice of being here or not. But I couldn't understand how a 12 year old who had everything healthy, wealthy, worthy, would want to or even consider taking her own life. And so as I did that research, I started to realize that the first pandemic that we should have been worried about wasn't COVID, it was suicide. And that the fastest growing cause of death in America in almost every demographic was suicide. People are not happy. And so, you know, walking the beach, it came through me, I got chills. And I, you know, the hardest part about coming up with this mission to empower others, to empower others to be happy, you know, you can imagine telling my wife after losing everything, going from 33 homes, a ski mountain, a golf course, every material object you could ever own to a rented house with rented furniture, three daughters under eight and a pregnant wife to finally, after making it all back, tell her, hey, I got a great idea. I'm going to change the world and make it a happy place to live. Uh, that was my first uh, hurdle to face, the fear of just being literally perceived as crazy by my own wife, let alone everybody else that would laugh at me, scoff at me and make fun of me. So the word happy keeps coming up. What does that mean to you? What makes someone happy and how does that relate to success? So happiness is the ability to enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of your potential. And so many people, they don't understand the relativity of the past. They take their defining moments and the inflection points of the past, which are the only limitations of the past. It's the only criteria in which we can utilize meaning or our perceptions to give it the lessons, the light and the love that it deserves. And then they don't know how to use today. They don't know how to use the 24 hours of today, the man-made constructive time that is a collective consciousness of this earth, that everyone that's alive on earth today shares the exact same limitation of today, which is 24 hours. And how do we use productivity, accessibility, and gratitude? How do we become more efficient, effective, and statistically successful? How do we do and stay active within the context of what's important to us not what's important to other people, not what's missing or what we don't want, and then be able to set forth with the activities we have planned, we don't have planned, our sleep, the activities we get paid for, the activities we don't get paid for. How do we put that into a trajectory of abundance, unlimited, infinite possibilities in the future? 
there are no limitations in the relativity of the future. So I teach five daily practices that help people understand what's important to you today in a trajectory of what you think is important to you in the future. And what you should be thinking about in the future is something that is so big, so outrageous, so audacious. Not only does it scare everybody else into laughing at you, scoffing at you and making fun of you, but it should terrify you. So can you share some of those practices that, that can help people raise the bar on themselves? The first step is to know what you want personally, experientially, giving and receiving wise in a trajectory of what you think you want in the mid and long term. That makes it a possibility. Then second step is to know who you can help and who can help you with what you want. That makes your possibility a probability. Then to understand how, by utilizing those lenses that I aforementioned of productivity, how much value can I provide, accessibility, how accessible am I to the people who I can help and who can help me, and how am I accessing what I want, not what other people want, what's missing or I don't have, and especially gratitude, the lens of gratitude reconciled in the 24 hours, paying attention and giving intention to the coincidences that we want that are most important to us. Once again, not anyone else or what's missing. And if you know your what, it's a possibility, the who's a probability and the how it becomes a perspective. But if we prioritize it by what's important to us, we now know our now. We actually utilize prioritization as an antidote to overwhelmed states of mentality or fear and also procrastination. When we know our now, we make quick decisions in alignment with not only what we want today, who we can help, who can help us and how, but we also are aligned in a trajectory of what we think we want in the future. And so by knowing our now, it also creates efficiencies, effectiveness, and statistical success, which allows us the fifth step to apply our why. Most people are in search, as I stated before, of their why. They're in search of more money, more health, more wealth, more worthiness. Instead, shift the paradigm and realize I'm connected to something greater than me that loves me more than my mom, an omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent source. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am worthy. We have to utilize a stop drop and roll mechanism to identify what it is I'm doing to interfere with it and clear it out of our way. So we always have obstacles that get in the way of our goals. How do we step over them? When we take a step back, how do we get ourselves to move forward? Again. Great question. So pain, setbacks, failures, and mistakes aren't obstacles. They're indicators. Uh, and so when we have the right mindset, heart set, and hand set, knowing that we have control of our hand set, mindset, and heart set, we then can see the pain, the setbacks, and failures as an indicator of promotion and protection, not a punishment. And so instead of resisting the setback, failure, mistake, instead of going over it, under it, through it, outlogging it, analyzing it, instead of denying it, instead of resisting it, lying to it, mani manipulating it, cheating it, all you got to do is stop. Breathe through your nose and out through your mouth. Remind, remember, and recollect that source, that omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing potential that you have. And remind, remember, and recollect of what you want, who you can help, who can help you, and how best to get it done. And reprioritize according to the light, the love, and the lessons that you've learned from that pain, from that setback, from that failure. And if you can shift your paradigm and perspective to know that you're being protected and promoted by something bigger than you that loves you more than your mom, instead of being punished, you will find an acceleration of growth, a compounding of interest, just like with money, but now with behaviors and energy that will exponentially accelerate you towards a trajectory of what you think you want. Who have some of your mentors been and what have you learned from them? Well, my mom's my greatest mentor, and uh, she has mentored me in my mindset um, and also been the most supportive person. Uh, but a lot of my mentors are dead. They've written books like Think and Grow Rich, The Power of Intention, A Course in Miracles. Uh, Blaine Bartlett is one of the world business consultants. Deepak Chopra is a mentor of mine. Sadhguru is a mentor of mine. Uh, I find many mentors. I have a sleep coach who for 16 years has changed my life. Dr. Mita Singh is my sleep mentor. Uh, but I find that 
the best way to have multi mentors is to find people who sit in a situation that you want to be in and that you can ask for directions. And those mentors, I do realize for me, there's some combos, but there's three components that I'm looking for. One, a mentor, someone who sits in a position that I want to be in and I ask them for help or give me directions. I have coaches uh, that bring the best out of me. They may not know as much as I know about business or sleep or whatever it is, but they bring the best out of me. And then I have teachers, people that may not know uh, everything that I know, may not be as successful as I am, but they know how to explain certain things that I don't know. And so I think everyone should have mentorship, coachability, as well as teaching in their lives at all times. And once again, when you know what you want, who you can help, who can help you and how to get it done, you then can prioritize by what's important to you, the mentors, coaches, and teachers that you want.